Hello and welcome to this presentation by me, John Hayward, entitled Mapping Differential Equations to Stock Flow Models. I'm a mathematical modeler. I often use system dynamics in my modeling, but I'm equally at home with differential equations as well. And what I want to do in this presentation is contrast system dynamics models with differential equation models. I run a research project called Sociomechanics, and that is an attempt to interpret system dynamics models using ideas from Newtonian mechanics. But that's not really where I'm coming from today. Um, today is a little bit more about mathematics. This question has been sometimes posed to me. What is the system dynamics equivalent of a differential equation model? Or put it another way, what is the stock flow equivalent of a differential equation model? And I want to show you that this question is not that well founded. And let's have a look at an example of the logistic equation, a well-known equation in mathematics used for many things. dx by dt equals rx multiplied by 1 minus x over m. And the idea is it is exponential growth modified by a factor that reduces growth as x, whatever it is, gets close to some carrying capacity. You usually see this in system dynamics expressed as the classic limits to growth model. There's a reinforcing loop R1 associated with the X that's in red, um, which is it's reinforcing. And there is a balancing loop B1 associated with the term, which is in blue. And the minus X over M is the negative link on this converter here. I've put all the in all the formulae that make up this equation in on the converters and the flow of the stock flow model, so you can see how the model is constructed. And it's the classic limits to growth, um, S-shaped. The reinforcing loop R1 dominates in the accelerating phase, and the balancing loop B1 dominates in the decelerating phase, and its limit is reached. That's straightforward. But let's multiply the brackets out. Um, same differential equation, but just expressed in a different form. Now ask ourselves, what would be the feedbacks here? What would be the flows? Well, Rx is the candidate for an inflow, and Rx squared over m is the candidate for an outflow. So this gives us a reinforcing loop on the inflow I've now changed my x to x2, so we can distinguish it from the previous one. But it's the same variable. And the, there's a balancing loop on the outflow, and because of this x squared, this is a non-linear balancing loop. So this balancing loop gets stronger the larger that x gets. Now, you would not normally see um, this type of model presented in system dynamics, since there doesn't seem to be any logical reason for this stock flow structure to exist. Nevertheless, it represents the same differential equation, and not surprisingly, it's got exactly the same behaviour in terms of um, x. So, now we've got two stock flow models from our one differential equation. Let's define an intermediate variable. Let's define y to be m minus x, and I can separate out the two differential equations. And this time, um, the x equation has got an inflow depending on x and y. That was my m minus x, with the m factored out. And I've got a y equation dependent on the, um, the negative of that. And the normal way of doing this is to share an inflow and have material flowing from y into x as a conserved flow. The reinforcing loop associated with the red x is on the x stock, and the balancing loop associated with the y, it's a minus sign, hence the balancing for the, in, for the outflow, is on the, on the y. And there's still only one independent state variable um, because of the conserved flow, and I can choose which variable is independent, but the stock flow model has expressed it in terms of two. And this is normally referred to as Bass diffusion, but without the marketing um, 
feedback loop which would normally be added in addition to this. This is the classic word of mouth, classic diffusion. And not surprisingly, it's exactly the same S-shaped growth, and it has the same explanation in terms of feedback loops. R3 dominates the accelerating phase, and B3, even though it doesn't go through the stock X, um, dominates the decelerating phase, but of course B3 does affect the flow that goes into X. This will become a little bit more transparent when we come on to the fourth model. Because what I can do is I don't have to have Y flowing into X. I can have Y flowing into a cloud and a cloud flowing into X and link the flows. And that's what we have here. And this time, yes, the red X is associated with the reinforcing loop on X. The blue Y is associated with the balancing loop on Y. But now to get the in the, depend, the fact that x depends on y and that y depends on x, y depends on x, I've coloured these in green and I've got this second order feedback loop running between both stocks. It's called second order because there's two stocks in the loop and I've called that B4A. It's now a three loop model but only two of the loops are independent because the other loop can be expressed in terms of the, of the other two. But you can choose which two. If I was looking at the growth of X4, I would probably choose R4 and B4A. If I was going to look at the decline of Y4, I would choose B4 and B4A. So the explanation now is that R4 is the accelerator for X and B4A is the decelerator for X. Same, exactly the same behaviour, exactly the same time graph. And we now have four models. So what's the difference between these four models? There obviously are different stock flow models, but they all have the same underlying differential equation. Why are they different? And the reason why they're different is the, what the stock flow model does is it expresses the order of computation in which these will be um, analyzed, worked out. So you've got to imagine this is running as a numerical simulation. That numerical simulator has to work out, in this case, which will it, which will it evaluate first, where it needs to evaluate the stocks, where it evaluates the flow. It works out, it takes that from this, it takes that from here. So there is a, there is a sequence reversing that, reversing putting causality back in. X determines X over M, X over M determines one minus X over M, 1 minus x over m determines the flow along with this loop. If you follow that order in each of these other um, three models, you get a different order of computation. And we can express that in this way. So here we go. We say that the um, f fraction is equal to x over m. That's that term there. That's what I'd work out first. Then I'd work out the inside of the brackets. g is 1 minus f. Then I would work out the flow H, which would be R times X times G. That's these three terms multiplied together. <clears throat> then eventually I'd work out X by integrating, because the differential equation is a misnomer. It really is an integral equation, um, and it needs an, int an integral to complete the solution. But in this case, I would work out the inflow first, X, Rx. Then I would work out the outflow, Rx squared over M then I'd subtract them, then I would do the integration. In the third model, I would work out the common flow, A is equal to Rxy, I would do the integration for X, and I would do the integration for Y. In the fourth model, I'd work out the flow into X independently to the flow out of, out of Y. And just looking at my slides there, um, the colours here should be green on X and blue on Y. And then I would do the integral on A and I would do the integral on B to obtain X and Y. So it's computational order because the stock flow models have a different causal connections. So they are, to a system dynamicist, four different 
models. So the trouble is the question was wrong. What is the stock flow equivalent of a differential equation model? Well, there isn't a unique answer. The correct question is, what differential equation does a stock flow model reduce to? And in the case of the four we've just had, they all reduce to the same differential equation. See, differential equation model is a misnomer, even though I've been teaching this stuff since, oh gosh, 1980? Um, it is a misnomer. A model is just a collection of assumptions that can be expressed as a differential equation after algebraic manipulation has taken place. And that manipulation might lose information about some of those assumptions. Those assumptions are causal assumptions. But once you start simplifying the equation, as all mathematicians love to do, those assumptions, the causality that was used to construct the model, have been lost in the algebra. And that's what's happened when the logistic equation has been expressed, even though it might have started off as the Bass model. So a stock flow model, a system dynamics model as we would know it as, preserves the assumptions in the model structure, the feedback and all the other causal connections. And that's the power of system dynamics. It comes because it retains all the causal assumptions in the model structure. You can see diagrammatically what those assumptions are. So, on the left we've got our stock flow models, our system dynamics models. By the way, I'm calling them stock flow models because the word system dynamics means different things to different mathematicians. But if you're a system dynamicist, you'll know the two are equivalent. On the right-hand side, I've got differential equations, and I can see I've got three models there, model one, model two, model three, all map to the same differential equation. And many to one maps are not uniquely reversible. So given a differential equation, don't work backwards, that is right to left on this diagram. Um, don't work backwards to determine the stock flow model. That's reverse engineering and you won't get a unique answer. Instead, use the original model assumptions. If you've got a differential equation model, take those model assumptions to construct the stock flow model and show that it reduces to the original differential equation. Always, when you construct a stock flow model, even if you've got a differential equation as a guide, always go back to the original assumptions to find out what causes what. Of course, <clears throat> neither the stock flow model or the differential equation model express the model fully. Normally, in system dynamics, we don't use formally and letters in a, for stocks, converters and flows. Um, although the stock flow notation shows the causal structure of the model and all the feedbacks, what it doesn't do is display, normally is display the formally in all the individual elements. So you can see the example on the left there for land occupied, which has a growth rate, but that growth rate is undermined because as the land gets occupied, it becomes harder and harder to build. In this case, it could be businesses, um, so perhaps say on a business park. So the balance in loop B1 kicks in and reduces the effect of the reinforced in loop R1. Now, this makes perfect sense causally because all the st items in the model now have real names so we know what they mean. The trouble is now we've lost all the information about the formulae. Um, this is like a sort of descriptive version of system dynamics but it hasn't uniquely described the model because all those formulae are very important. But of course, if we'd expressed it as a logistic model using differential equations, apart from not having any of the names, um, neither would we have had um, the f um, any obvious way of working out the feedback structure unless we could just spot in this case that the bracket was one loop and the bit outside the bracket was the other loop. Um, system dynamics usually uses transparent real-world names but hides the formula, but differential equations uses symbols because it, it makes it easier to read, and I can assure you I find this, the maths easier to read than the system dynamics. Um, it's easier to manipulate formally. You soon find the equilibrium points of this, and show one's stable, one's unstable. But of course it loses any connection with the concepts they represent, and of course the assumptions that we used to construct the model. Both 
modeling paradigms are missing information. So sometimes I do two things. Sometimes I express my stock flow models with all the formerly on, as I've been showing recently. So I replace the element names with the formerly, and it reveals the model assumptions mathematically. And of course, if you then look at the flow, you actually get the final right-hand side of the differential equation. The only downside of that is the real names are lost. Um, so it wouldn't be of much use in the average system dynamics um, um, modeling scenario where you're sort of you know, I'm talking with people who are not mathematicians. This would be a, a no-no. It wouldn't get you anywhere. But to a, somebody like me, I, this tells me everything about the model I need to know. The other thing I do is highlight the feedback loops on the differential equation. So on the right hand side, in this case, I've colored them. If you look in my papers in the sociomechanics, on sociomechanics website, you'll find that there we annotate those papers with subscripts or with loop names, and it's all sorts of ways of doing it. And that is a mathematically sound way of capturing the causality that underlies the differential equation model. But for this presentation, I just thought colors would be a little bit better. Well, that is the end of the presentation. Um, thank you very much for listening. And please do go to the Sociomechanics website where you will find more information about the research that I'm involved with. Thank you.